Hey everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. Today I want to talk about what I consider to be the folly of trying to quote unquote catch the bottom. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and follow us on Twitter where we put out regular updates about our risk indicators and more. So I wanted to talk about this issue. It's something that I've touched on in different videos, but haven't talked too extensively about. And I wanted to just delve into it a little bit more here. And the reason why I think it's useful to talk about this right now is that if you just look across kind of the crypto media sphere, you know, from, you know, uh, more print media-esque type things, you know, kind of the, the news desks that are out there. So for example, Coindesk, you'll see things like this all the time, headlines like this, where, you know, is the bottom, you know, finally in, speculating about, in this case, whether some upcoming options um, expiries might mean that the bottom's not in at 17.6K. And then other speculation that we're, we're close to the bottom, that we're almost there. And certainly if you go into crypto Twitter, what's really dominating the discussion over there is this discussion of bottom. You know, Is the bottom in? Is the bottom in? Are we close to the bottom? Is the bottom in? A lot of different th uh, people just saying, oh, looks like the bottom's in. Is the bottom in? Is it not in? There's a lot of ink being spilt asking this question of, you know, was 17.6K the bottom and is it going to generally just be up from here or not? Now, it makes sense for people to care about this, right? Because I think we all want to know what direction the market's going. We want to know if there was, you know, the bottom was there because if the bottom was there, you know, people want to get in early so that they don't, you know, miss out on any opportunity. But what I see as potentially being a little bit of a folly in this kind of thinking, is the idea of, of trying to catch a falling knife and how that can lead people to losing a lot of money basically or missing out on better opportunities had they just waited to pull the trigger had they not gone all in on speculation that a current local bottom was the bottom so let's just talk about this a bit more i think what a lot of this is being driven by is the psychology that you know it's kind of natural for market participants to have where they kind of want to be the hero right you know everyone wants to be the person who you know bought in at the bottom of the 2020 um, uh, market crash and then went on to hold all the way to the all-time high. You know, everyone wants to be the person who can go on to crypto Twitter and brag that they just, you know, uh, were able to ride the asset up, you know, 1,500, 15.500% to the upside. And so everyone is looking for these kind of pico bottoms, these absolute uh, bottom points where they think they'll be able to get in and ride the most upside and you know obviously when you look at these charts in hindsight you know you might think that it's pretty easy to do it's like well obviously this crash wasn't going to keep on going down so obviously you should have just been yoling in right there or if you look at the 2018 bear market you know if, looking back in hindsight people can probably point to all sorts of things like well obviously you know with the fed pivoting more dovish back there of course that meant the bottom was in etc indicating that it's this kind of idea that it's easy to catch these bottoms but the issue is that in real time, it's anything but easy. And I think just in recent history, probably in most of our um, memories, you know, if you've been following the markets just for the last several months, you know, a lot of people thought that this bottom that we had back here in late January of, of 22, going down to, you know, around 33K, a lot of people were arguing that that was the bottom, that in fact, we were still at the time people were arguing we're still in a bear market, or excuse me, still in a bull market. You know, they were arguing set in a higher um, low than back here. This was the local bottom and it would just be up from there. And it, you know, for a while seemed like that might have been the case. And so at the time, people might have been thinking, oh man, I should have just gone all in right there. When I saw that, you know, wick down to, to 32K, that's when I should have just put all my money on the table. And especially, we you know, when price moved back up towards 48K, people were, you know, probably a lot of people were saying, oh man, I should have really gotten in there. We're just going to go right back to all time highs. And I missed my chance of catching that local bottom. But then sure enough, you know, if you just wait a few more months into the future, you know, we end up from that local bottom back in January. You know, we had a capitulation wick that went down. That was 22.5% lower than the January local low. And then just waiting a few more weeks, then we had that even greater capitulation down, you know, 46.6% below this local low, almost 50% price drop from here to here. So imagine how disappointed or how, you know, uh, someone who went all in right here is not going to feel too great. If they went all in here, you know, and then didn't sell out later, if they just kept that position and then you hold it for negative 46% to the downside, you're not going to be feeling all that great. But for a lot of people before this move happened, they were looking back at this and seeing that as a great 
buying opportunity and, and wishing they would have gotten in. And that's where I'm saying it's not so easy to call the bottom because, you know, when you look back at these previous bottoming points, there would be people who were back here saying this was the local bottom, saying this was the local bottom. Or in 2018, people saying that 6K was kind of ironclad support, that it would not break. It would be the bottom. And then sure enough, we end up capitulating back below it. So basically my point here is that no matter what, when you're doing it in real time, it's a heck of a lot harder to know when the bottom is in than if it's not. And of course, people are looking at different indicators, trying to give them an idea, but ultimately people don't know because a lot of people are looking at the same indicators saying that 25K was the bottom and then we went down to 17K. And so, you know, it's not, those are not definitive. You know, all these different indicators we're looking at, they're about probabilities. They're not about definite answers. And so saying that one price level was the bottom is inherently risky from that perspective. So if it is risky in a way to try to catch the bottom, you know, to try to hold all your dry powder, just go all in all at once at what you think is the bottom, how that can sometimes leave you burned, like we've seen back here, what are some other strategies to consider? Now, obviously I should say on, on the front end here, you know, not financial advice. If you want to go and try to target the bottom, try to chase the bottom, more power to you. I'm not going to tell you what to do with your money. But these are things that I think are just important to consider, you know, when weighing different strategies. So another strategy that people can employ, and the one that you see I have advocated for the most probably in the crypto space, is dollar cost averaging. This idea that you don't really know when the bottom is. And so instead of trying to throw your money in all at once, you're just going to try to slowly kind of average into the market down in price ranges that you think are at least getting closer to the bottom. And so for a lot of people, you know, they probably weren't going to be DCAing up here when, you know, it was clear that we we're in a more mania phase. But then as we were coming down here, more and more people would have been dollar cost averaging into the market. And, you know, that can certainly be a reasonable approach as well. You know, that's certainly one way of doing it. But another way that I want to talk about that I don't see being talked about as often in the crypto space, but I do think is also a perfectly valid approach. And so I just wanted to bring it forward for consideration here. Is the idea of just waiting for some confirmation of a broader, more macro trend reversal. So instead of trying to, you know, either call the exact bottom or even kind of average into what might be the bottom, what about just waiting to some indication, some generally reliable indication that at least the, the asset might be turning more bullish? Now, the one thing that a lot of people look at in Bitcoin specifically as being kind of this key dividing line between bullishness and bearishness is the 20 week moving average, which is what I've just overlaid here in green. And, you know, that's certainly one way that you could do it. Right. And, you know, you look back at the history of Bitcoin and you say, yeah, look, you know, it does a pretty good job of identifying, you know, kind of bearish times, bullish times, bearish times, etc. Not too bad. But of course, you know, there's some times where it kind of leaves quite a bit to be desired. So, for example, if you were just relying on the 20 week, you know, if you just never didn't enter the market till right here coming out of the summer of 21 and then didn't exit till here coming back out, signaling kind of a bearish reversal, you know, you would have gotten in at around 44K, gotten out at around 50K. That's not really much to write home about. That's such a small profit relative to what you could have written. Are there other things that you could have been looking at instead that might have given you a more clear um, indication? So what I want to talk about is actually some models that we have here at the channel here at Upside Down Data that I personally am watching quite closely because I think they can give a lot kind of earlier warning signs of a trend reversal that oftentimes can be quite um, diagnostic at least from a historical perspective, if we just look back at how they performed over time. And that can give you more potential benefit than something like the 20 week. And I'll compare one of the, the next indicator I'm gonna talk about more directly to the 20 week. But I wanted to start with the trend confidence indicator. If you've been following the channel, you've probably seen me talk about this indicator a lot. It's one that I like to monitor quite closely because it tends to have this very nice characteristic about it where it can front run trend reversals or kind of major trend, uh, trend reversals. It can sniff out um, weakness in the market in an uptrend and it can also sniff out strength in a market in a downtrend before price isn't, has even necessarily reversed. It can front run and that's where I think it's very useful. So um, the way that you can interpret this, so this is a machine learning based model and uh, essentially it's called the trend confidence indicator because the values are basically trying to know how confident we should be in a given trend. So when you're seeing really extreme high values or, or more and more higher values, it means you can be more and more confident that you're in you know, an uptrend and then lower and lower uh, down values mean that you're gonna be more and more confident you're in um, a downtrend. 
So I'm zooming in here. So I've shown in previous videos the full history of Bitcoin with the TCI overlaid. Go check out those videos if you want to see that. I've just zoomed in because it's easier to see when we zoom in what's going on. And I just started it from the beginning of 2020. to just see how it's, it's performed and things that we can watch for going into the future. So you'll notice that, you know, it does you know, give an early warning sign of the March 2020 crash, you know, all the way kind of back here. It was signaling weakness in the market. And then, you know, obviously, if one would have gotten out there, they would have saved themselves from all this downside. And then it quickly reversed back to the upside, really kind of down around here. It's, it decided, all right, it's seen enough. It thinks that the trend is reversing to the upside. Off we go. Some weakness here, kind of as we had this kind of little drawdown, some strength moving up into this kind of BART pattern, getting up for this drop. And then starting to get much more kind of consistently bullish through this big parabolic phase with only a momentary blip of weakness in here. But then the main thing that happened that I think is really one of the very useful things that the TCI did back here in the spring of 21 is it got bearish quite early on, right? It really kind of from the peak up here in March and then even by the all time high up here in April, see the TCI is red at the all time, well, at that time, the all time high up at 64K. It didn't even get green. And basically what it was telling you is warning, uh, flashing very clear warning signs throughout this whole time was that this trend here was no longer believable. That this uptrend was something that was very doubtful. And so you can see with this downtrend in the TCI while you're in this uptrend in price is a very bullish or bearish development. And sure enough, it ended up then proceeding, kind of giving an early warning for this massive crash we had going into the summer of 21. But then likewise, you'll see that it actually flipped bullish before we got to the absolute bottom in the summer. It actually was saying, hey, pay attention. The trend seems to be breaking. And indeed, that's what happened. You know, we then shot off to the upside, which ultimately led us to the all time high. We had a bit more kind of more recently to kind of jump ahead a little bit more, you know, kind of coming off that local low I was just talking about in January of 22. You know, it got bullish, you know, right around here, all the way up through 48K. And ended up actually flipping bearish at around 43k before we had this massive capitulation. Only one little blip up here before we got this second big capitulation to the downside, all the way down to 17.6k. So what I like about the TCI is it's not necessarily something that's going to be, um, you know, it's not really necessarily be calling macro trends. Not really what's designed for. What it's more designed for is just saying whatever trend you're currently in, and that's the key thing. Whatever trend you're currently in, so, you know, currently an uptrend, currently a downtrend, uptrend, whatever. How confident can we be in its continuation? And it's performed, in my opinion, quite well. And oftentimes has been able to call out early, well in advance, these warning signs of an of impending crash and early signaling the build up to a potential big rally like we saw up here. So that's why I'm personally watching the TCI right now, because if the TCI were foot bullish, that might just be a signal to start paying more and more attention to Bitcoin. Now, one of the nice things about this model is we can actually probe it to ask it, what is the critical price level that you're watching? That's this dividing line between bearishness and bullishness. And, you know, currently, if price for Bitcoin were able to recapture the 23.5K range, it would then actually start seeing that as being a possible break of this downtrend we've been in and a possible possibility of being able to put more moves back to the upside. But until we break that, it doesn't really see this as being uh, too much reason to be excited. It thinks that we need to reclaim that level. And then, um, so yeah, so that's one kind of level to be watching from the TCI's perspective. Now, another model that I'm watching to see if, if the trend might be breaking, which then might make give me more confidence in the market or make, might uh, make entries seem more kind of uh, desirable in some ways, is the market direction classifier or MDC. Now this is a, a indicator that's designed to be more macro in its focus. So when you're in kind of a macro bull run to kind of be spending, you know, really be identifying as an uptrend pretty much the whole time with maybe only temporary kind of um, flirtation with kind of the bottom support line. And then generally called bearish times as well with kind of being a general sea of red. So you wanna see you kind of sea of green, sea of red, sea of green, sea of red, etc corresponding to bullish phases and bearish phases in the market. And you see it does a pretty good job throughout Bitcoin's history. And so if you're not familiar with this indicator, um, the way that it works is that for every day, basically what it does is the model assesses what's been going on with Bitcoin, and then it generates what it sees as being a critical level for Bitcoin to be above, to be bullish, 
And then if you're below it, it would be bearish. And so really with this color coding I was just showing you, that's just whether or not the daily close for that day was above or below this kind of critical level line that's kind of being set every day for Bitcoin. Now, the thing that I think is really useful about the MDC is that um, as kind of a more macro oriented indicator, I think it does, well, it just does do a heck of a lot better job than something like the 20 week moving average, which is what this purple line is that I've just overlaid on top. So basically the idea is that with the MDC, it's gonna call a bearish phase earlier than the 20 week will. So for example, you know, looking at this first move Bitcoin made into 2011, then coming off of it, you know, it started turning bearish all the way up here you would have been only been getting out down to here if you were just trading purely on the 20 week. And then, you know, likewise, you know, more recently, you can see that coming off of, um, well, really any of these tops, it calls, you know, the top much more quickly than the 20 week does, or would tell you to be de-risking getting out of the asset more quickly than the 20 week. So, you know, 2013 dual peaks, the 2017 peak would be telling you to get out a heck of a lot earlier than the 20 week. And then also coming off of the 2021 local top and then also the all-time high over here it was telling you to get out earlier and then also get in earlier for the bull run than the 20 week moving average was so that's why i see the mdc as being a very useful thing to keep to keep an eye on because it really kind of serves the same purpose that the 20 week is for what a lot of people use the 20 week for but i think we can just see here clearly it does it better and I've shown back testing in previous videos that does show that you would have markedly better, um, significantly better, you know, multiple X higher, many X higher returns trading off of the MDC versus trading off of the 20 week. And of course, the other nice thing about this model, because every day it's generating this critical price level, is that we can ask it, what's it looking at? And so the MDC tends to be a bit more patient of a model than the TCI. You know, the TCI is kind of more twitchy by design. It's trying to call the moves as early as it possibly can and hopefully front run trend reversals. The MDC is more about kind of uh, having more confirmation and then flipping green when it can be more sure that this really is potentially a bigger trend reversal. So it's currently watching the 28.7-ish K range for that. So we're still, you know, currently trading well below that, only trading a bit above 20K right now. But this is the uh, dynamic level. It'll be, you know, changing. And so probably as price, you know, either consolidates or whatever it's doing, I suspect the, t the critical level here to fall down lower. And this is already quite a bit lower than the 20 week, which again is what it's designed to do. It's designed to give you a, a warning of a trend reversal before the 20 week will, um, will do so. Basically, in my opinion, just making it a better indicator of bullishness or bearishness than the 20 week. So the reason I'm talking about these trend indicators is this is kind of what I'm looking at. Instead of trying to catch the absolute bottom, you know, if we flip back to the price chart, um over here you know instead of trying to be just being kind of too worried about catching the absolute bottom i'm more concerned with when is the point at which the upside potential is still very large but also i can be relatively confident that if i put my money in right now you know we're not just immediately going to see a 50 percent move to the downside or at the very least a, an indicator that will will give me a critical um level that will be in validation zone so let's say for example we did you know surge and reclaim 28k and then fell back below it you know, if I was trading based on the MDC, all I do is buy in at, you know, once it flips green and it flips red again, I just sell right out immediately. You know, you might, you might have to pay a transaction fee for your, your trouble, but you're not really going to be losing much. You know, it's kind of helping you manage your risk. You're not going to be holding the bag as it falls down lower. Whereas, of course, you know, if you're putting all in at the bottom and then just saying, all right, I'm going to let it run, you know, you would not take your money out necessarily and you might just hold it to a lower level. You know, if you went all in here and we're just saying, I'm going to hold it to all time highs, you know, you'd be sitting at a 50% loss right now, or, or, you know, not quite a 50% loss, but quite a bit of a loss right now around, um, around a 36% a loss had, had one done that. And so that's just one other thing that I wanted to talk about, you know, as being kind of another thing to think about. Now, again, not financial advice. I'm not saying this is the strategy you should adopt versus any other ones. I think there's pros and cons to each one. So, you know, obviously the most returns will come from accurately calling the bottom. So that's un not... Um, doubtful DCAing is really nice because it's kind of low thought. You don't have to be paying attention too much. You're just kind of consistently DCAing into the market. It's kind of you know low stress. But then I also just did want to bring bring up this other possible strategy, which I don't see people talking about, which is just you know kind of biding your time, being patient, waiting until there's some indication of a trend reversal, then getting more excited. And then you could always always combine strategies. You could always DCA after um, signs of a trend reversal have emerged or things like that. You know, whatever the case may be, 
But really kind of the point I wanted to say here is that I personally see kind of trying to catch a falling knife or trying to catch the bottom being a bit of a fool's errand because no one really knows when the bottom is going to be. You know, no one has any real idea. People will guess, people will speculate, but no one really knows. And not to say that's not useful to speculate on it. You know, obviously, I think it's useful to talk about, you know, is the market going to turn around, all that kind of thing. But in terms of using that as a clear buy signal, I just think there's a lot of risk that's involved that people don't always fully appreciate. So just some things to consider as we try to navigate this brutal bear market. And as you know, we talk a lot about this idea of a bottom. All right. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter, put a lot of updates, better indicators and more over there.